die veld komt het wijd gesmeld. Die lied van de volk zal ontwaken. Wat harte dat zudder en vier. Die vreese waarmee ons moet leven Vir gans en vir moord en vir ruip Ek smoeg vir die bad news Vir Zuma en sy views Van ons op TV moet kyk Ek wil nie meer hoor hoe ons tieners begrawe Oor niemand al speer aan die wet Ek wil nie meer lees van affirmative action Op een klei om te hou wat ek het Gee vir my een nieuwe geit Een koos toe plus gee en een tellerij Wat lief die sim en skruis en strui Voor die mooi van ons land en ons raak Om hier te kan bly Ek syk vir my lemma, sy leens en sy stem Maar ons hou maar ons mond en betaal Weg in kampe, voort lint vir die rampe En bid dat die Heer ons kom haal Daar is woon die Mandela wat mense verbrand het Maar nou wil sy huil in haar hand Die staatskas is leeg en die A en T Jeeg saai verwoesting en pijn dier ons land Gee vir my een nieuwe gei Een koos toe plus die ene Sy kinders, sy kinders kan bly Maar sy huis en sy lande Is nou in die hande Van die vijand tegen wie hy moest strui Ons kinders verstaan nie Waar kom al vandaan nie Al erfenis is uitgewis Geen volkslied of vlag nie En geen ere wacht nie Vir die helde wat daar nie meer is Gee vir my een nieuwe gei Een koos toe plus die en een tellerij Wat lief die sim en skruis en strui Voor die mooi van ons land en ons raak Om hier te kan bly Gee vir my een nieuwe gei Een koos toe plus die en een tellerij Wat lief die sim en skruis en strui Van ons land en ons raag om hier te gaan bly En ons raag om hier te gaan bly Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this evening's edition of Radio Free South Africa with your politically incorrect host, Gert Jan Swichelaar. I'm still standing in for Karen Smith, who is unable to attend to this program for the time being, and uh, she wishes everyone uh, well and uh, hopes that uh, the news from South Africa isn't uh, getting you down so much that you are not uh, able to uh, take action to uh, perhaps turn around something that is unfolding there. And uh, I thought it would be appropriate to start the evening with a quote uh, just to give everyone listening and uh, those of you who uh, are listening want to uh, direct other people to this program Uh, I want to read a quote uh, by the uh, amazing South African Minister of Education. And so uh, this is to uh, give you all who are not quite aware of the level of intelligence 
uh, that is uh, affected or is uh, displayed by uh, the uh, Negroes running the government, the ANC government of South Africa. This kind of gives you an idea of what uh, we are actually up against. And so this is um, the uh, Minister of Basic Education, uh, a Negro woman, who says, quote, Learners must take care of themselves and rest these holidays. I would advise them to not touch their books so they can rest their brains because studying too much causes brain cancer. Schools are reopening in a couple of weeks, said Motshekga. I'm not saying that using your brain is totally wrong, she says, but I read somewhere on the internet that if you use your brain too much, you can damage it and you can get brain cancer. So let's take things slow out there. People must just relax and enjoy their holidays, she said. And so that is uh, a quote from the education minister. And I I do recall uh, hearing uh, or reading rather a quote by I believe it was the Minister of Health who um, was quite adamant over the fact that uh, girls are more likely uh, to get pregnant than boys. And so uh, they had to take uh, special care uh, to prevent that from happening. Uh, but, of course, the boys were, it's not quite as common uh, for them to be pregnant. Uh, they don't quite have to take the same uh, level of precautions Oh, my goodness. And to think, you know, these people, these Negroes that have drifted into South Africa are now stealing, you know, everything they can get their hands on since the government has totally uh, okayed uh, a a law that enables black people to steal the property of white people and they don't have to give anything back. And uh, they're stealing, you know, land and vehicles and you know, you name it, your chair, <laughs> your table. Um, and, of course, the farm murders uh, and uh, the uh, murders in general in South Africa are starting to increase as uh, more of the Negroes are becoming, uh, <clears throat> we'll say, brave. Uh, but uh, they don't just go in and kill. They horrifically torture before they kill and so there is a real weird kind of a um, attitude, a kind of a characteristic that's uh, perpetrated by Negroes who are the descendants of interlopers and have no legitimate claim whatsoever to anything down there in South Africa. So, yeah, we are up against something very, very uh, diabolical. It's uh, the, the essence of the Negro soul has never left as it was uh, so eloquently um, portrayed in uh, Rowan Helper's book, The Negroes in Negro Land, etc. And you can find that as a free PDF download on the internet. So highly recommend you Google that. It's The Negroes in Negro Land by Rowan Helper. It was published in 1868. Uh, before political correctness got a hold of our publishing and uh, we were no longer able to uh, reveal the true story. And uh, bit by bit over time, uh, since then, more and more myths have been perpetrated and are replacing the truth. And um, you know, people have bought into the myths. And because they don't know any better and because the literature is supporting the myths, you know, they all think it's the truth when, in fact, uh, there are more and more of us, of course, waking up and realizing that a lot of the information uh, has been tampered with and that there is, in fact, an overt agenda afoot to genocide the entire white race. So uh, the circumstances unfolding in South Africa are very much like the uh, canary in the proverbial uh, mine, coal mine, and uh, we better be taking a closer look at what goes on there. I saw a horrific photograph that was published, and indeed there are several uh, very important articles, and I quoted uh, one just now. Uh, they are in rents.com. So if you go into rents.com, there's a, quite a lot of information uh, uh, about what's going on in South Africa. But there is some good news, and that is coming out of Australia. 
And uh, what is uh, the good news is that South uh, that Australia is actually uh, working to expedite uh, passports for uh, white people who uh, want to escape from the horror impending, further increasing horror uh, in South Africa. And so um, that is something that should be uh, promoted by all uh, governments of essentially what were white nations. Um, instead of importing the uh, sub-Saharan and Central African untermenschen, uh, Somali chimp hybrids with an IQ average of 60, uh, you know, into your nations, these people will never ever contribute anything, and uh, indeed, all they can do is uh, destroy and steal and rape. But uh, they they live a you know fairly basic instinctual kind of an existence. And uh, they certainly, uh, those with the Muslim hive mind uh, set, they are hell-bent on the uh, raping of our white girls because they represent uh, the Huris that they're promised in paradise. Uh, Huris are bashful virgins, the color of corals or a bright red as rubies. As it said, that's how how they're depicted in the uh, Quran. And of course, uh, as you know, color of coral, the color of corals generally is a, uh, various uh, tints of pink and uh, and rose. And uh, of course, I've said this before, and you know, it always bears repeating that uh, our white girls, when they're exposed uh, to the sun without any uh, attention to uh, an umbrella or, or uh, you know a, high, a large brimmed hat or some sunscreen, they do tend to uh, turn red like rubies. And so um, those are the girls that are promised, and uh, those are the girls that are being uh, preyed upon in Europe in increasing numbers. Indeed, Sweden, which is a country considered to be lost, is overrun by those savages and uh, is uh, called, uh, I think it's Malmo, that is considered the rape capital of uh, the planet. But uh, in South Africa, the numbers of rapes and uh, murders are also staggering. Indeed, uh, South Africa has uh, likely the highest murder rate on the planet. And it's not just uh, blacks murdering white people, but Negroes murder each other also. They're still very tribal, and there's many different tribes that are represented in South Africa. And so that is also part of the problem very difficult for these uh, beings to um, get it together and work in any kind of harmony and then when they do take control of something they are incapable of running it and that of course is uh, witnessed uh, um, very overtly in Zimbabwe where the white farmers were all murdered or uh, you know they all left that place uh, the Negroes took over the farms, and uh, and now really what was once Rhodesia and a wealthy white nation uh, where Negroes knew their place, um, it's now really, as Donald Trump you know, calls countries such as that, it's a shithole. It's, it's, the Negroes can't run anything, and so now they are basically begging for white people to come back and uh, restart the farms. But of course, you can't imagine any white person, you know, that that has a brain to consider, <laughs> remotely consider returning to Zimbabwe, you know, and, 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 then, and then perhaps risk the same circumstances unfolding in the next generation or even, you know, a decade or two later down the road. So, no, really it was, in my opinion, a bit of an error that white people made was to go into into Africa in the first place. They should have just left Negro land to, to the Negroes and, like, eat each other and, you know, hack each other to pieces and practice their juju and their mumbo-jumbo and all of that, but lock the borders to them, don't... But, alas... Uh, you know, our governments and the minds of human beings, white people, have been so infected with the Judaic cultural Marxist virus, and, uh, you know, and they've been all socialized into being essentially mush-brained uh, individuals that have no care for the continuation of their own race, 
and uh, love everybody because we're all one family, don't you know? We're all one race, don't you know? You know, I never bought into that, right? Not from the very beginning. I never bought into that we're all one race notion. That, I don't know, maybe I am a bit more insightful or what it is, but uh, I've always had a very circumspect attitude regarding Negroes, and not to suggest that all Negroes are, are bad or or you know, incapable of being beneficial, um, helping, contributing, cooperative citizens, but it isn't their normal behavior. And uh, and so, given how the Jews have got them all stirred up and using movies and television to give them, the Negro, the idea that they are equal or even better than white people, uh, you know, look at how you know, black uh, basketball or football stars are rewarded. I mean, these people are living like kings of old, driving expensive million-dollar cars, whatever, you know, but they're still Negroes. And just because somebody can chase a ball around, like what makes that person worth a million dollars or more? Um Gosh, I, you know, I see lots of dogs around here that are really good at chasing balls around and returning them, and even some can be trained to throw them through hoops. And so I don't see that there is really all that much benefit uh, to be derived uh, collectively as a nation, as a community, from somebody who has the ability to chase a ball around. I mean, I would suggest that uh, we have our priorities all messed up and it's because of messed up priorities, you know, completely um, weird notions of what constitutes reality, people uh, very easily following the dictates of authority figures and not thinking for themselves, you know, all these sorts of things. And, of course, demonocracy, a top-down tyranny of the masses completely controlled by the media that is owned by six Jews. And so, um, you know, realize that's what we're up against. <clears throat> I've got a ton of stuff here. Like, I got a whole bunch of notes and, and things that we can be talking about. And, you know, and then Radio Free South Africa is, uh, you know, I mean, it's free South Africa. And so we're free to talk about, you know, kinds of stuff. And with, you know, of course, obviously an attention and focus on South Africa. And uh, and raising awareness and and promoting the uh, you know necessary fundraising, um, but uh, you know we can also uh, discuss a few other things as well so that uh, we mix it up a bit. Um, there's so many things going on on planet Earth, and and you know so many very interesting uh, new information that is uh, coming down the pipe. And of course, uh, you know the Jewish entity wishing to take control of the planet. Well, they never really, they never really figured that we'd get this far, uh, and that the internet would be this effective with regard to raising awareness about, you know, the parasite which is the Jewish entity, and then of course their war dogs which are the Muslims and their pets which are the Negroes. And uh, so few people are afraid, are willing to tell the truth about all of that. You know, so many people are afraid, and certainly you won't get the truth from mainstream media. That's a fact. And so that's why it's so important to direct people to these radio programs on on the resolution rdo uh, dot com, blogtalkradio dot com, um, eurofolkradio dot com. Yeah, tune into my radio program Friday night, Radio Free Stratophoricus, or the one uh, that's broadcast out of uh, London, England, on Eurofolk Radio. That's when I talk with Alfred Schaefer and with uh, Andrew Carrington Hitchcock and with Alison Chablow, and uh, and uh, we go down the rabbit hole and discuss you know important issues. And it's so important that that people do discuss important issues and 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 that's important that you help direct people that way um you know i mean a little bit of trivial conversation fine and dandy but really what does it get you is this trivial conversation is you know we're we're grown up human beings and uh 
you know, there's certainly far more important things to talk about. And certainly South Africa and the plight of the people there, that's number one. As far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, I mean, that's the focus of this radio show. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to put on an ad, and uh, and then uh, I'll be right back. So um, I want to direct your attention to an important book, several important books. Um, well, first of all, if you want to read a very cool history about South Africa, that's written like a novel, but it is the, it's an accurate history. It's called Bulala, and. Uh, um, Oh gosh, uh, I can't remember the uh, author at the moment, uh, but I will look that up for you. But anyway, Bulala, it's a very well-written, interesting history of South Africa, so that kind of clues you in. Um, I think that uh, required reading for everybody uh, has to be the uh, Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion by Douglas Reed. But for many people, I mean, that's a big book. It's, it's 300,000 words, uh, you know, so it's a massive tome. And um, for a lot of people, it, it just, it's too big. It, 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 you know, it scares people away. Not that it should. I mean, you know, every book is read one word at a time, really, you know, uh, page by page. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. And if they're not novel books, even novels, sometimes, uh, you know, there's some really cool ideas that are presented in, in well-written novels by, uh, you know, awesome writers like, say, Ken Follett, for example, um, you know, which is worth underlining and, and maybe notating in, uh, in the margins over. But certainly you do that with important books. And, you know, if you interact with a book like uh, The Controversy of Zion, right in the margins, underline, circle stuff, oh, boy, you get a lot out of that book. And uh, However, like I said, if it's too big and onerous uh, a book, then uh, what I suggest you do is uh, read um, what I would consider to be a condensed version of what's in there, uh, which would be the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. And that is a required reading, truly, because it, it, it tells you what essentially the master plan of the New World Order is all about. And then once you've read that, a whole lot of things will start to make sense. And you'll say, oh, yeah, 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 that's why this, and oh, yeah, 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 that's why Agenda 21, and oh, yeah, 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 that's why they want to push everybody into the cities and make them live in tiny little boxes, and oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's why yeah, I'm so broke today, and why both my wife and I are working real hard, and we can still, and our children. Children are, are not so smart anymore like I remember we were when we were in school. And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's why the government's completely in charge and control of things, and, and their police will beat the shit out of us if we disagree. And, oh, that's why so many of us are in jail. You know, that's why you realize that there is a, a an age-old Jewish agenda that is being used against us like a weapon. It's been a weapon all along. Uh, but now they are trying to speed up the agenda somewhat because more and more of us are waking up. And uh, that is also thanks to the Internet, uh, which is kind of like the wild card uh, that they didn't uh, think about. Behold a Pale Horse is a... Uh, I haven't read it yet, looking forward, but it's been highly recommended in a number of places, so I'm definitely paying attention. I've uh, read quotes from it, so it sounds like something that is definitely worth looking into. Um, now, of course, if you want to read interesting literature, uh, you could read my books, uh, some of which are still available in electronic format. I have no idea who's making the money off them, because I certainly am not seeing any royalty checks. The publisher has gone out of business. The owner has disappeared, sold his house. Uh, over 70,000 authors have been left in limbo. Uh, it's a real uh, uh, problem at the moment. But uh, you can still get some of my books, and they are highly entertaining. And, uh, and they're good-sized books, too. Uh, you know, they do weigh generally a pound or more. The biggest book I've written so far, published book, uh, is uh, over two pounds, and it's the biggest book ever published by that house with over 70,000 authors. I have other uh, things uh, that uh, you might want to uh, pay attention to uh, if you aren't aware of what's in the Koran and you're still under the delusion that it is a, um, a religion of peace. 
and then I said, direct your attention to my website, um, gertjam.ca or stratophericus.com, either way, and uh, and you can buy a um, an expose of the Quran. It's called The Horror. You'll also see it advertised in rants.com. Um, plus, uh, there's also available, if you are at all interested in doing law work for yourself and not hiring a lawyer uh, to beat the system, there is a handbook for the righteous uh, or how to beat the unrighteous at their own game. It's also a PDF download that you can purchase. It's a bit more expensive because it is a... Uh, well, it, it's taken years to put that uh, information together, but uh, once you've read it and assimilated the information, you will realize that uh, uh, basically the uh, pr- the present uh, court systems in most of our countries are very corrupt and uh, and really truly uh, a playground for a Jewish entity uh, in which they can fleece us uh, legally and plunder us legally. Uh, but it is all a giant illusion and a and a and a, and a mag- well, it's a magnificent scam, it really is. Uh, but they are uh, beating us with um, admiralty law as opposed to practicing the common law or natural law. Another wonderful book I direct you to is Frederick Bastiat, The Law, and that is a very important book, Frederick Bastiat, The Law. And that certainly will give you uh, some very interesting insights into what's being done to us. And uh, perhaps uh, you might realize that it's about bloody time we stood up to the oppressors. And same in South Africa. Uh, You know, people have let it go way too far, and they never really paid attention to Albert Schweitzer, Dr. Schweitzer, Uh, who you will call was a German doctor who spent most of his professional life ministering in Africa to Negroes. And he uh, said, quote, the biggest mistake white people ever made was to give the Negro the idea he was equal to the white man, end quote. And so, uh, you know, that should have been a lesson. But, uh, and of course, going further back, um, never really having paid attention uh, to what Jesus of Nazareth said in uh, Matthew 23, for example, about not calling anyone master, you know, not even the Messiah, to be, you know, more in control of oneself and and not to be uh, um, a slave of other people's opinions and other people's ideas of what the truth is. You know, if you're going to be like Jesus, then, you know, you've got to be strong and you question the rabbis. You don't just uh, acquiesce so easily. Anyway, I'm going to play you a little bit of music, uh, which you might enjoy. And it's called The Piano Student. It runs 5 minutes, 19 seconds. Okay, here goes.
Yeah, that is the piano student. You know, those of you who play an instrument, you can probably identify identify with that. You know, those long, lonely hours when you're at the keyboard or, you know, you're at your clarinet and, you know, your friends are outside. And Oh, boy, I, <laughs> I went through that, certainly. Yeah, well, anyway, so that's what that is, the piano student. It was something I composed uh, back in late 2016. Um, uh, yeah, so um, let's uh, return to uh, talking about South Africa, a nation in which the president openly sings a song, Kill the White Man, Kill the Boer, and uh, he's not being arrested for overt racism. Uh, he has a, another, um, well, it's not like his assistant, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, but he does have... Uh, kind of a, a fellow overt racist in the, by the name of Julius Malema. And uh, they are both uh, leaders of Negroes who uh, totally think it's, uh, it's okay to, you know, torture, chop up, and then barbecue the meat of uh, what was once a living white person. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the story down there. Cyril Ramaphosa. The difference between him and uh, Jacob Zuma is the fact that Cyril does have a bit more education, and some of it stuck in his head. Whereas, uh, you know, of course, Jacob Zuma was dumber than a plank. <laughs> Never even invented a plank in Africa. And so, yeah, Jacob uh, Zuma, he couldn't even uh, put numbers together. You know, you put a big number in front of him, you know, this is the budget, whatever, for the nation and so forth. And he'd be like 11 teen and, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, very, very, not a very, very highly advanced intelligent there. Um, and I've talked about this before. It's my contention, actually, with all due respect, and it's certainly not you know, anything that any present-day Negroes have any control over. But somewhere in the distant past, I believe there was some very significant genetic tampering that went on there to create what now has resulted in what we have um, Negroes, eh, the ones in Africa, native-born, not uh, inbred, or uh, pardon me, not uh, miscegenated with, uh, say, Irish or Jewish uh, DNA, uh, the more pure uh, bred uh, Negroes of that, of say, Central Africa, <clears throat> they uh, they really, uh, you can quite easily see that they do in fact have uh, very uh, strong simian features, uh, protruding lower jaw, you know, uh, fairly pronounced brow ridges, uh, some of them actually these huge flat noses, like um, these Negroes. I think, is it now Cyril Ramaphosa that has a nose that goes from one side to the other of his face? Or was that uh, Jacob Zuma? Or is it uh, that uh, arch-criminal communist thug uh, Robert Mugabe? No, anyway, maybe they all three. But um, certainly you can see a certain gorilla kind of an influence there. And then, of course, uh, a natural propensity of the Negroes real quick to anger uh, in fact, even their little, you know, offspring, they, I've had that happen to me, in fact. We had a, a Negro family living down the street, totally, well, not in more a white neighborhood anymore. There's a lot of Filipinos in that area now, too. I mean, the third world is taking Canada over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty evident. But anyway, this Negro family, the uh, uh, one of the uh, offspring, um, little boy about six or seven you know I mean he doesn't even know me and I'm six, over six feet tall white man and this little niglet had the uh, had the audacity to hit me because he disagreed about something I'd said or whatever and I, I didn't say anything like you know what, whatever nasty to this whatever kid it was something fairly innocuous but he disagreed and he outright hit me now I'm thinking back to an earlier time had I been say seven eight years old and I'd smacked an adult white man you know I probably would have ended up on the other side of the street or something uh, yeah you know there's something child no respect and with violent tendencies and you know you may have 
you know, real nice, uh, calm Negro family, but it's the offspring that that exhibit the traits, or or maybe another generation further down. But it doesn't seem to go away, and uh, you know, we do recognize that, you know, even here in North America. There's a whole lot of hijinks that's being perpetrated by Negroes, uh, you know, with mass, the murder rates. Now, Jews also are murderers big time. In fact, if you Google uh, mass murderers in the United States, uh, the list is a long one of Jewish entities that have perpetrated horrific uh, mass murder crimes. Ted Bundy, for example, murdered over 30 girls gorgeous, young, teenage, lovely, early 20, brunettes, mostly long, beautiful brown hair, lovely girls, club them with a tire iron. Yeah. Or a son of Sam is another one, sick pervert. Jeffrey Dahmer, these are all Jews. Huh? So you got to realize that uh, the Jew is admonished to lie, cheat, steal, and even kill those of us who are not Jewish, they call us goyim, that means animals in human skin. And of course the Jew's hand on South Africa is long, has long been there, and is a heavy hand, and is now, you know, they created this ridiculous political system called democracy, demonocracy, a top-down tyranny of the masses controlled by media owned by Jews to think a certain way and to elect certain people, and eventually what did you get in South Africa? Communist government, ANC, yeah, both uh, they pit communism and democracy kind of against each other, you know, and oh, then it's capitalism, well, capitalism, democracy, they kind of go hand in hand, and communism is, is you know, the whole thing, political and economic system, but communism uh, preaches that uh, we can't own anything, that everything has to be owned by the state, and, and they must control everything from a centralized government, and you know, they believe uh, the kind of way we need to live is what uh, George Orwell so eloquently showed us with his prescient book, 1984. You take a look. You know, if you don't want to read the book, there was a fabulous movie made with John Hurt and Richard Burton, uh, which is a brilliant uh, take on the book. They were pretty, pretty accurate uh, in, in their portrayal, and they didn't stray off the uh, off the text very much. And so, yeah, that's a pretty good sort of idea of what it is the Jews want to, again, um, subvert or, or, let's say, reduce us to um, the kinds of circumstances that uh, we saw uh, during the height of the Bolshevik uh, control of the Soviet Union. And then, of course, many uh, who disagreed with the system uh, disappeared. <clears throat> many <clears throat> people in the former Soviet Union were um, judged to be uh, mentally incompetent or indeed insane, and uh, psychologists, of course, psycho psycho psychoanalysis, psychiatry, you know, those uh, pseudosciences were invented by uh, one of the stooges of Judo Jewish intellectualism, Sigmund Freud, uh, because he recognized that amongst his own people, you know, most of them were mattered and hatters and nuttier than fruitcakes. So uh, that's how he invented that and, of course, made a lot of money off uh, psychiatry, as indeed a lot of psychiatrists that happen to be Jewish. You know, I think that's a coincidence. But, you know, they tend to drift into um, a lot of... Uh, um, the professions that uh, are very lucrative, and so you will find uh, lots of Jews represented in the just us system, the legal system, the legal plunder system, uh, or you'll find them uh, all quite heavily represented, as I said, in the uh, in the um, psychiatric psychology sort of areas. So now, um, something that I've observed, uh, and uh, I'm uh, very much an interviewer of people, although I don't interview people on my radio shows, uh, although that may come about at some point, uh, but I don't feel a need to at the moment. There's enough other yak shows out there and, and so on. So, um, But at any rate, uh, uh, oh, no, where was I? 
geez, I just lost my track of thought here for a second. So in order to regain that, I'm going to uh, play something uh, that is important. And, uh, of course, since this is, in fact, a radio program, uh, we do have advertising. I'll see if I can just uh, find where did that train go. I think it went off on a sidetrack. Yeah, I really like that ad. Uh, you know, really open carry, that is what I propose and that is, I'm a strong proponent of that. Everybody should be trained in the uh, safe and effective use of firearms. That should be like training children receive right an early age in school. Children don't learn much useful stuff in the public school system, and that's a fact. And I am uh, certainly qualified to criticize the uh, public school system since I worked in the uh, system as a fine arts teacher for 20 years. Uh, eventually I quit because I uh, really I saw what the agenda was that was unfolding and I didn't really want to be part of that anymore and besides I wanted to write some books and so I did write a bunch of books as I said they're available and I do remember what my track was uh, where the train went I'm just bringing it back off the siding and we'll get back on the track was I talking about Sigmund Freud and, and psychoanalysis and psychiatry well uh, I talked to a lot of people and I've talked to lots of young women uh, who are going to college or university and when I ask them what it is they're studying um, gosh a good 85 percent have admitted they are studying psychology so they're pushing a lot of girls uh, into those uh, subjects, into those disciplines, who um, eventually will be those, you know, know-it-all women that you can't uh, really reason with, and they know everything, and uh, they assess you because you have conspiracy theory notions in your head, even though they're true and they're not conspiracies, but they're facts. Well, everything's a conspiracy. I mean, you know, we all do talk, uh, you know, behind closed doors or in secret with friends and family and discuss things that are nobody else's business. Well, that's conspiratorial. Uh, but in the case of, say, um, the, uh, in the, the awareness of uh, or and the insight into the functioning of the darker side of governments, uh, well, those are, uh, you know, not conspiracies. So people that harbor those notions will be uh, judged mentally ill and sent to the asylums where then they will be chemically lobotomized and, and eventually discarded. Uh, so that is something that uh, we also need to be aware of. Uh, when you do find uh, young women uh, indicating to you why they're studying psychology, perhaps question them, like why and how, how is it that you got pushed into that notion? Why would you choose that pseudoscience, you know, that bogus Jewish science, uh, which uh, really could result in some fairly negative outcomes uh, for the philosophers, the artists, you know, uh, the truth seekers, the the, the soothsayers, yeah, the intellect, the intelligentsia, they quite often are the ones that, that get it when the Jews take control. And we've certainly seen that. We saw, saw that in the former Soviet Union. And indeed, when you look back um, at the history of the uh, Jewish entity, um, you know, take a look maybe in there in Jewish Encyclopedia or or do read uh, into the Talmud, for example. That's their most holy of holiest literature uh, tradition. And uh, you can get that online uh, very easily. Just go to comeandhear.com. Comeandhear.com. Very simple. If you remember, comeandhear.com and the entire Talmud is there. You can read it, you know, in all its gory glory. And then you'll know for yourself why uh, those of us who have read uh, quite a bit in there and, and lots of other uh, information about that entity, uh, why we have the opinions that we do have about them. Uh, indeed, uh, myself, I had read copious amounts of books on you know, the subject of National Socialism and the Jewish question and, and all of that. And then I read Mein Kampf at some point, and I had come to the exact same conclusions uh, 
about Jews as Adolf Hitler had come to in with his book. And so, you know, none of that, what he was espousing was anything particularly new in some cases it was. And, and certainly, uh, you know, the ideas of how to, to you know, truly uh, run an effective government and, you know, the philosophy of national socialism and all of that. Gosh, that's certainly, uh, that's a very amazing book. And uh, apparently next to the Bible is one of the most sold books. In fact, may even be the, the second most sold book on planet Earth, Mein Kampf. Not so much out in the Western world where the Jew has uh, uh, quite a lot of control, but uh, for those of you who've been paying attention, you notice that uh, in the Eastern world, in Japan and other places, that uh, you know the principles, the philosophy of social uh, of national socialism is uh, is being uh, embraced, and indeed uh, uh, people are uh, proud to dress up in the uh, the uniforms of the SS and the Wehrmacht and and are um, you know proudly displaying uh, the national socialist flag with the uh, marvelous uh, swastika and so on so you know that is an important symbol and uh, the way it was uh, expressed on the uh, flag the symbology of the national socialist it represented wealth and prosperity for everyone forever which are pretty noble righteous ideals uh, for a government to espouse and uh, we certainly don't hear that coming from the lips of our present day politicians and we certainly see don't see uh, our present day governments benefiting all that much the uh, people uh, you know on the front lines certain uh, small percentage of elites mostly Jews are the ones that benefit in fact they even get a completely different preferential treatment in the court systems and so that is also a fact and uh, I really don't like that very much I, I think that uh, that's just wrong and that needs to be addressed and I just hope that you know those of you listening get it in in your heart and mind that you know there are things that we can do or start thinking about what can we in fact do and uh, you know maybe somehow we can come up with some some plans you know the advantage that a Jew has is that he's just better organized but never buy into the the idea that they are smarter than uh, we you know Caucasian Aryan Celt Gauls Rus you know, Picts, Frisians, Anglo Saxons, Welsh, Irish, you know, Scots, all of the different white peoples that collectively are, are categorized as the Caucasians or the Aryans. You know, we, we uh, collectively are pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, as you continue to work at waking people up to who, in fact, is the enemy of, uh, of us, and uh, how we are being invaded by pre-medieval, hive-minded Muslims uh, who are hell-bent on taking over and outbreeding us and using democracy to defeat us at the polls, you know, in a in a system that is a you know basically set up to fail right from the very beginning and not really benefit us at all, but it certainly benefits the uh, elite. And so, you know, that's got to stop. And the only way to stop it is by raising awareness. And so, again, I want to take a break. Uh, and I'm going to play uh, a, a wonderful piece. You may have heard this before. I'm not sure. But it's called a Meditation on an Oboe. Hope you enjoy this. Thank you. 
We're not sure it has some delicious sounds in there, eh? As the oboe can be so, yeah, you can read some screeches in there that are quite, I like some of that kind of disharmonic, kind of screechy sound once in a while, kind of wakes you up. <laughs> yeah, and so, now I don't want to laugh and I don't want to smile. I'm feeling rather tragic. I saw some photographs that are posted. If you haven't seen them yet, go to rents.com. Go down the middle, you'll find them. Photographs uh, coming out of South Africa of some of the after results, the after effects of uh, an invasion by Negro savages and the kinds of things that they have done and do to people. Uh, it is really unsettling. And so you know that the people, the white people in South Africa are in trouble, serious trouble, facing potential genocide. The Negroes have said that you know, they could pretty well do it in 48 hours, wipe out every white person there, since there's 40 million Negroes pitted against less than 4 million whites. Now, there are some uh, apparently white-appearing people taking advantage of these circumstances, and so there are some... There's a lot of um, kind of disharmony within the white community. Uh, there is an attempt being made by someone, uh, I think his name is Simon Roche or Roche. Uh, I am very suspect about this individual who is head of a group called the Zuidlanders, the Southlanders, and uh, he's admonishing uh, wealthy white people to buy expensive SUVs and, and equip themselves with you know, all the necessities of high-end camping and uh, is um, have, or has been collecting quite a lot of money in the United States, but uh, allegations coming out uh, from South Africa are that a lot of it is uh, fraudulent. And, uh, and subsequently, uh, one should be apparently circumspect regarding the support of uh, the Simon Roche chap. However, there are people that are worthy of your support and uh, whom you can indeed uh, trust with your money. And uh, it is absolutely imperative that you start considering sending money uh, to help uh, the beleaguered people of South Africa. Indeed, uh, there are white people starving in a land that was made by their ancestors. Thousands and thousands of white people thrown out of work, all their their means uh, consumed uh, in order just to live, and now relegated to living in squatter camps uh, with uh, no... Uh, economic circumstances to help themselves with and so it's really important they receive aid and that can be done through the um, it's called the South Africa Family Relief Project it's headed by a woman named Lee Dupre and uh, you can support that organization simply through the uh, website that is uh, attached to this radio program at the uh, radiofreesouthafrica.com uh, Karen Smith has set up a means whereby you can uh, send money, uh, and I think it's via PayPal, uh, but uh, the information is there, and so uh, please do consider that. Uh, another group that is in dire need of support are the Khoisan people who are trying to, to uh, create a haven state uh, as a um, an answer to the communist ANC uh, part of South Africa, they want to indeed secede half uh, of South Africa, and uh, the lands that uh, are in contest are in fact legitimate lands belonging to the Khoisan people. They do have absolute legitimate claims, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, they will be able to uh, achieve this noble goal. Uh, we're all kind of holding our breath, uh, uh, you know, just hoping that at any minute uh, perhaps uh, some significant funding will come their way and they will be able to uh, further uh, the agenda uh, to make that uh, happen. Uh, but it is an opportunity for both white people and the, the Khoisan people to create a nation that uh, that the king, uh, King Kuibaha Cornelius III, as indicated, should be devoted to a significant degree uh, to the um, furthering development of high-tech agriculture and likely even uh, cannabis hemp ag uh, agriculture. 
um, there is a tremendous potential, and he does recognize that there's way more benefit to uh, agricultural production than there is to mining. Uh, mining, you know, what does it bring up? Well, yeah, other than, you know, important metals that we can use in the industry and in and, and our, uh, you know, electronics and technology and so forth. But <clears throat> uh, diamonds and, and rubies and all of that, really, they're just baubles. They don't really have much, much real value. Uh, the real value is in things that we can uh, eat <laughs> and we can continue to live. Can't eat gold. Can't eat silver. Can't eat rubies. Can't eat emeralds. So you know he he does recognize uh, where uh, you know South Africa, that region, uh, can actually uh, do something quite significant. And the other. Uh, um, sort of um, belief that he has is that, of course, a fundamental, important issue that we all need to address is the betterment of our public education programs, and so that children uh, do, in fact, learn beneficial skills and important knowledge instead of, uh, you know, these compartmentalized bits and pieces that collectively kind of make no sense for most people, but it's by deliberate design uh, to create, uh, you know, essentially compliant uh, sheeple who do not really question the Income Tax Act, for example. They just accept that as, you know, it's the norm. We all do it. We've always been doing it, and therefore it must be right. (laughs) But that ain't necessarily so, just because we've been doing it uh, for a long time doesn't necessarily make it right. And that is the problem, um, and I've said this for a very long time. In fact, I was somewhat admonished by one of my principals you know, when I was uh, teaching in a large high school, and I uh, he was very uh, you know, adamant about tradition. And I said, you know, tradition really has been a major impediment uh, towards uh, the advancing of civilization. And uh, he didn't really take kindly to that idea, but it is a fact you know, nations, people, uh, religious, uh, organized religious groups, they all get stuck in certain traditional behavior patterns or in traditional belief systems, but they're not necessarily true or necessarily beneficial or particularly conducive to the advancement uh, of the nation or the civilization that we are trying to uh, um, evolve. And so, um, you know, I think it's really smart and wise to reflect upon traditions that you are perhaps engaged in. And and some, of course, are beautiful. You know, the traditions that that surround Christmas, for example, you know, the symbolic celebration of the birth of Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, That is lovely, but, you know, the Jews uh, totally destroyed uh, that uh, when they invented uh, Coca-Cola and used Satan Claus, Santa Claus, as their uh, sort of uh, commercial um, retail elf, if you will, to promote their product. And uh, yeah, those of you uh, listening to this program likely are aware that uh, Coca-Cola is a phosphoric acid and uh, is extremely detrimental uh, for us, indeed, the the syrup is uh, uh, and Coca Cola as its a liquid mixture too is used uh, by the company uh, to help clean their engines on their delivery trucks, and the police apparently can use it as a very effective uh, um, solution to clean up uh, blood off highways and. Gosh, you know, when you think about that, then you wonder, jeepers, why would I want to be putting that into my body? Yeah, just like I really, oh, I just, I can't handle drinking tap water. I just, it's I just, it's a natural revulsion. I know it's all nice and clean looking, and you know, it doesn't even smell all that much of uh, of uh, chlorine, and you know, but it likely has fluoride in it. And uh, and it's got a lot of other crap in it. You can't really see it, but it's there. It does settle out after time. Um, we're fortunate. We do have pretty good water here where I live, but it is fluoridated, and so I try to avoid drinking it. But I just I can't help. I still end up having to shower in it, and the skin is not impervious to it. So, 
uh, you know, I really find that reprehensible. But it is, you know, we know who's behind that, of course. Uh, I mean, the the factories that produce that stuff, hexafluorosilicic acid, uh, that is the fluoride put in drinking water, it, and mostly it's sourced from the scrapings of the chimneys of fertilizer plants. And uh, back in the 50s, when that industry really started to develop, and the atomic bomb manufacturing industry and the aluminum manufacturing industry produced these byproducts that were so highly carcinogen, carcinogenic that they, the Jews that mostly owned those industries, had you know, what do we do with it? How do we get rid of it? It's just it's toxic. It's hor- It's really dangerous. It's oh well, just let the goyim you know, metabolize it out, and then we reap the added benefit of dental fluorosis so we can then sell dental products. And uh, and then, uh, oh, yeah, and it is the primary cause of premature death, but in the meantime, it causes all these, uh, you know, na- uh, negative side effects in human beings from which we can benefit by selling pharmaceuticals to cover over, you know, the problem, you know, that sort of thing. Well, you know, that really is the story. And uh, the the studies that were done in the in the 1950s uh, that uh, tried to prove that fluoridation was good for us um, showed that the teeth of uh, five to nine year olds had a marginal improvement uh, when fluoride was fluoride was added to the drinking water, but they dismissed as irrelevant the rising incidence of cardiovascular diseases. And that's a fact. And uh, I think it was in 2013, November's issue of Lancet, which is considered one of the most prestigious medical journals on the planet, uh, Lancet um, uh, labeled uh, that fluoride in our drinking water is in fact a weapons-grade neurotoxin. And so given that, uh, really it is expedient upon all of us to address our city councils and uh, and suggest that they are in fact engaged in criminal malfeasance and should in fact be dragged through the courts and sued for their you know shenanigans for their poisoning of the wells uh, but of course uh, you know people being fluoridated what happens is the fluoride calcifies the pineal gland and when your master uh, sort of in your it's like your it's your third eye really truly it's like the master antenna uh, in the middle of your brain and when that's calcified it doesn't receive and tr- transmit as well and so uh, you know people do uh, 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 well what results is that uh, there's definitely um, evidence of diminishing IQ in children and uh, you know of course in adults um, there is uh, all kinds of proof that it is uh, also linked to Alzheimer's disease. And there's actually quite a plethora of issues that result from the, that fluoridation. And subsequently, really, uh, you know, if you're not taking exception to that, then really, what, you know, what's wrong with you? Are you, you know, wishing to commit suicide or something, you know, by, by not saying something about that? But, of course, you listening to this program, you're not amongst that group. And so now that I've you know, spoken about that and if that's new information to you, uh, then I would recommend that perhaps you uh, look into it a bit further and start uh, speaking up about that. Another uh, issue that I have uh, problems with is uh, cancer, the, the, the cancer industry. I mean, there was already a patented cure for cancer, uh, in uh, about 1934, in the United States, Royal Raymond Reif, who was this brilliant pathologist and a very inventive man, <laughs> what he did was he uh, he developed a very effective uh, type of um, microscope that uh, it was different than a normal microscope. And what it was able to do was to uh, well to to actually see uh, viruses. Uh, and uh, by subjecting the viruses to uh, various uh, electromagnetic frequencies, he learned that uh, these uh, these these cells, if you will, viruses, they're very kind of a unique uh, manifestation of a unique a unique life form. 
uh, that uh, various frequencies would cause these. Um, well, first of all, let me back up here. Uh, that special, uh, um, like this sort of a microscope that he invented, enabled him to to see these viruses by causing them to fluoresce. So that that's how he was able to see them. And then he figured, well, if I can affect them that way with uh, electromagnetic te- uh, uh, um, frequencies, say, and they, they are fluorescing, well, what if I work with that frequency and, and, and somehow maybe either harmonize or disharmonize with the natural frequency of that, that life form? I mean, we all vibrate at, a various, at various frequencies. The earth indeed vibrates. Its natural vibration rate is 7.83 hertz, but because it's slowing down on its axis, you know, if in fact it is a ball, okay, and you know, again, that's a whole different ball <laughs> game, and I uh, don't want to go there now. So, we'll, we'll, so anyway, what's happening is that um, these uh, various electromagnetic frequencies, he was able to to cause the virus to begin pulsating and the, the cell wall was was vibrating pulsating if you will at a frequency that it couldn't maintain its integrity and eventually at some point it would rupture and it would spill its contents and subsequently that that virus uh, cell that virus little entity was was killed uh, and so um, Knowing that, he invented the Rife Ray Tube system, and that was a, a system whereby he was effectively curing people of cancer. It was a patented cure. He had uh, in, like, uh, clinics uh, operating uh, throughout the United States for up to about five years when a Jew named Morris Fishbein, may his name live in infamy, inf- infamy, May his name live in infamy. Uh, that Jew uh, was um, high up in the American Medical Association, and he hauled Raymond Reif into court and literally had this man in tears on the stand, you know, crying, why are you doing this? I've developed technology that can save humanity. But, uh, of course, the Jews get off on watching others suffer and uh, and the overall sort of, you know, negative vibe on the planet is uh, is is somewhat maintained by you know maintaining illnesses in people because of course that doesn't create a lot of happiness uh, when your loved one is uh, suffering from cancer, for example. And now that you know there was a patented cure, uh, maybe you should be thinking about addressing your government uh, representatives and say, well, what the uh, you know why? Why have you allowed this to be this way? And uh, and look at what's happening to my loved one. And I think maybe I should take a rope and hang you for your for your involvement in this and allowing it to continue. I mean, really seriously, uh, isn't that really how we should be addressing all of this? But of course, you do realize that that you know politicians operate in a an arena called a parliament. And uh, if you actually take a look at uh, what that word means, it means a place where lies are spoken. And so <laughs> it's pretty overt. Uh, and uh, But, of course, most of us are not taught any other languages. And so all we have is English. Well, I, I have more languages, but, you know, I mean, I admire people that speak eight languages and, and, and understand them. I think that's just fabulous. And really, we all have a propensity to learn every language on the planet right from a very early, like right from birth, actually. But, uh, you know, since those uh, those languages are not taught, they're not a dra- we don't hear them, we're not exposed to them, uh, you know, we don't learn them. And eventually the ability uh, atrophies, uh, and uh, and then it's you know more and more difficult uh, for people to learn uh, and speak other languages. But the more languages that you know, and the more ang- languages that you can operate in, uh, gosh, the better off you are because you know of course the more connection you have with uh, you know larger a variety of human thought. Uh, I mean, certain ideas can be expressed in French that you cannot express correctly in English, for example, or or, or an idea that can be expressed in Dutch. You know, a word that that you know you need practically a paragraph to explain in English what that word actually means. <clears throat> so, you know, that that is. Uh, 
um, again, something uh, that uh, I was going to mention that earlier when I was talking about uh, King Cornelius III, King Kuibaha of the Khoisan people, uh, he has a very uh, great interest in education and, and indeed recognizes the importance and the value thereof. And so that is also a very significant part of his plan for the, uh, the uh, sovereign state of good hope. Uh, it'll be a place where education is highly valued and sought after, where agriculture is, uh, is something that uh, <clears throat> will help feed the entire planet, and the potential is so great there. And uh, it is meant to be a place where only people who uh, practice high-quality Christian values, who live the golden rule, are welcome. Anybody that's uh, Jewish or, or Negro, they're not welcome there. It's not a place for them. And so uh, that, I really uh, think, is uh, something that should be strongly supported because it is likely the only hope for uh, the white people and then, of course, eventually for the Negroes as well because once the whites are gone, you know, and then they go after, let's say, uh, you know, the other people, Chinese, the Malays, the East Indians, uh, then all that's left is Negroes, and then they'll just start killing each other. So... Uh, that is essentially how I see how that could potentially evolve if <clears throat> help isn't on the way real soon. And so, yeah, again, you know, send your funds if you can. If you can, you know, send it through Radio Free South Africa. If you want it to go to the Khoisan uh, people to help them bring about the state of good hope, then, uh, you know, make sure you put that in the subject line where when you indicate uh, on the uh, website radiofreesouthafrica.com you know where you want your money to go you know the information's there how to go about that or you could maybe you know there's a likely other contact information there as well so but uh, Karen is uh, quite busy at the moment and uh, like I said she's not able to attend to this program and and she's still trusting me to do this for her and so I uh, hope that uh, uh, you listening are not too disappointed that Karen isn't here and that you have to continue listening to me babbling. But uh, hopefully uh, I do present some ideas that are worthy of your attention. And, uh, yeah, let's uh, talk about the fact that the United States is bankrupt uh, since 1933, actually, and uh, you can check uh, the March 17th record of the U.S. Con the U.S. Congressional record of March 17, 19, I think it was 1993, but I'm not exactly sure. But there is a, uh, a politician named Traficant uh, connected with that information, and uh, there may be something that you might want to do a bit of research into. Um, another uh, book uh, that is worth reading, the Iron Mountain Report, uh, that was published in 1967, and uh, you can certainly uh, uh, access that, do a bit of Googling, and you'll find that as well. There's a, a YouTube out there, I believe it's titled Ted the Terrible Turner. Uh, that is something worth uh, uh, taking a look at, and so maybe follow that up. Um, let me see what else. Okay, I'm going to take a little break here right now, and I'm going to put a little bit more music on, and then I will be back. So this particular piece is running 15 minutes, 25 seconds, and it's called Be Up at 5 a.m. So here we go.
Sometimes you get that screechy feeling in your head. Hey, you have to wake up at 5 a.m. and you've been partying the night before and it comes and there it is, 5 a.m. and it, oh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that was uh, my music and that was played by the Amsterdamers, Phil, uh, <laughs> pardon me, the Amsterdamers Pro Harmonic Orchestra. You wonder, okay, who is the Amsterdamers Pro Harmonic Orchestra? Well, that's me also, actually. I play all those instruments. I do it all, actually, on a MIDI keyboard, and then I key it all into a, a fabulous piece of Apple software uh, called uh, Pro Logic 10. Logic Pro 10. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, so... Um, Okay, uh, I think we should take a wee little break at this point and throw in a couple more advertisements because that is actually something that I have to do uh, in order for us to keep this program going and the other programs of uh, Resolution RDO Network. Uh, you know, we do have to give our advertisers uh, a bit of airtime. And so, for anybody out there listening of the Muslim or Jewish persuasion, maybe you might prefer this product in this particular form. See, people that have an issue with pork is because they're thinking in an older traditional version of pork when porkers are out there you know, bathing about in their own muck and so forth. And, you know, they are actually, uh, you know, quite filthy or potentially filthy animals. But uh, if they are in a pen, they are smart enough to, uh, you know, try and keep their uh, excrement and so forth apparently in a corner uh, and not sort of, you know, hither and thither here and there. Now, I'm not sure. This is something that I was told uh, whether that's in fact true, but I do, I am aware that there are people who have pets that are pigs, pig pets, and uh, and that they can be house trained. So uh, they do. I've also read that a, a senior pig may have the actual uh, intellectual sophistication of a human three-year-old. So. You know, they are actually quite an intelligent and advanced animal, but uh, the way that, uh, you know, our bacon and, and ham and so forth is obtained, uh, these animals uh, here in where I live in this uh, province, they are raised in highly sterile, highly controlled uh, conditions. Uh, indeed, you cannot get into these barns without... You know, basically, it's almost like you're going into a nuclear facility. You've got to get completely into the right outfit, and you can't bring any, uh, con you know, uh, disease or, or anything, any contaminants. You can't bring into these places. They, like I say, it's these animals. It's not the same story, and they're not eating, you know, the same muck and and and, and crap and and and, and so forth. Uh, potentially poisonous things. Uh, they're fed a highly controlled diet, and subsequently, you know, their meat is uh, is not really an issue uh, with regard to, uh, I think, the you know kind of worms and so forth that that you know people have tried to lead us to uh, think is in there. Is it really that I've thought that through, and that wouldn't make sense really given the 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 uh, conditions that these uh, animals are brought up in and they don't even uh, grow all that long uh, they, they tend to be um, um, taken care of when they're still piglets you know so yeah so anyway but that's that uh, I'm not a big eater of meat uh, but I do eat uh, you know sausages and, and bacon and so forth from time to time I mean uh, we are an omnivorous uh, uh, being, our body. I mean, we do have canine teeth, and, and, and we have teeth uh, meant for squishing uh, vegetable matter. So the fact that we're omnivorous, uh, I think it's not a bad idea to uh, keep that ability. I think that once one becomes completely vegan, uh, you know, and again, the claim is made that people who are, 100% vegan, well, of course, they become so fussy and they become such a pain in the ass. 
going to restaurants or to have over for dinner and you know and of course eventually they they're somewhat sickly they don't, they don't have the same kind of vitality that uh, those of us who do still consume some red meat from time to time and poultry and you know and so on and i wouldn't recommend eating fish uh well it depends where the fish comes from but i certainly wouldn't be eating fish from the pacific uh, definitely not the northern pacific uh, the wee way southern pacific around patagonia yeah sure that's fine still uh, there doesn't seem to be too much in the way of radiation uh, over there in, and not on the uh, bottom of Argentina neither. Uh, but uh, the Fukushima radiation, uh, that is um, the result of uh, Jewish tampering with the security systems and the backup systems at the Daiichi plant when uh, Israeli agents were in there. Uh, to uh, Well, these were people under the guise of... Um, uh, technicians that are there to service the uh, computer systems uh, implanted the Stuxnet virus and compromised all the backup systems so that's why that plant failed and of course you know, I mean who would ever think of putting such a dangerous technology right on the shore uh, just like down in uh, Sonofri, the Sonofri plant uh, that's uh, between Los Angeles and San Diego. Well, it's decommissioned now, but it's sitting right on the sand, basically right on the edge of the ocean. Ooh, I used to drive by there, and it just gave me the creeps to see that. Because that technology, that really is Jewish science, Jewish technology, and it's it's a very expensive, ridiculous way to uh, to boil water. Because ultimately, that's what it was, what it's about. It boils water, you know, that heats steam turbines <laughs> that generate electricity. It's such a malarkey technology, and so expensive, and so incredibly dangerous, and indeed so dangerous that most of the uh, Northern Pacific Ocean is um, dying. Uh, animals are inc- including now high level uh, high uh, on the food chain killer whales are washing up dead on the beaches so yeah that 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 whole story is uh, ongoing now uh, past seven years and uh, there doesn't seem to be any way to uh, put a stop to it now um you know, I'm wondering if perhaps, I mean, since the entire population of Japan has been compromised pretty much, radiation levels in Tokyo are so high. Uh, in fact, uh, I would be very circumspect to uh, come anywhere near Japanese people now coming from Japan, that is, because they are likely radioactive. Um but very shortly after the disaster, already hot spots in in Tokyo were such that um, they already were were emitting such an amount of of uh, gamma radiation that people you know couldn't help but be infected, and uh, that'll show up with uh, increasing cancer rates and infertility there in Japan. But uh, uh, something that could possibly be considered is a fusion bomb, is uh, drop a fusion device on there and just suck it all into essentially a black hole kind of a story. Uh, and that's maybe something that could be done. But, uh, you know, I I don't know who's got that technology. Well, likely that technology does exist. Uh, so, yeah, in the meantime, I would do recommend that uh, people living in the Northern Hemisphere make sure you top up on iodine um, because, uh, you know, that will help sort of uh, keep back uh, the uh, negative um, effects of the radiation. Um, if you go to Jeff Rentz's website, uh, there is uh, information pertaining to a product that will help uh, uh, alleviate or in fact uh, completely mitigate uh, the uh, radiation and uh, will keep you uh, pretty safe but uh, overall <clears throat> the entire planet is uh, is being poisoned uh, when you take a look at the wind currents carrying that radiation oh my gosh the west coast is just getting hammered but what happens is it it comes up against the coast, 
and the uh, way the wind works it uh, down south well all along the west coast it carries it up over the mountains so then it goes way up high again and then it settles down you know some hundreds of miles distance in fact even as far as Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and so forth, they've, they've uh, registered uh, pretty high levels of radiation. Um, the Canadian government, which is uh, essentially a communist government of uh, morons and uh, highly incompetent uh, people who are traitors and, uh, and not really doing uh, the work that a government is supposedly doing. But then again, I've never been under the delusion of thinking that government is all that good for us. I've thought of it as a disease uh, for a very long time. And politicians are the vector of that disease, and Jews are the uh, nucleus. Uh, and so, uh, you know, democracy, communism, those are Jewish inventions that have caused us to be enslaved. The only um, political system that, that makes any sense is National Socialism. In fact, has proven that it is uh, 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 the best way to run a country and to use a fascist uh, uh, fascis, the fascists, uh, to uh, uh, make sure that uh, any kind of criminal malfeasance conducted by corporate entities will be uh, dealt with uh, with rods of uh, of uh, hard steel and uh, and an axe if necessary uh, yeah well, yeah that's the thing is that the uh, governments uh, that we live under they are not uh, fascist governments and subsequently they are spineless and uh, you know the the people that uh, comprise our governments uh, let's say the house of congress in the Jew united states Many of those people in there are dual citizen uh, Jews that uh, have their first allegiance uh, focused on uh, Israel. Same with uh, you know people, essentially the cabinet surrounding uh, Donald Trump. Many of them are Jewish, and uh, again with an allegiance to Israel. And so uh, you know that shouldn't be the case. I mean that to me that's that's a treasonous uh, situation. How can you be? Uh, you know, a, a government official in one country, but your allegiance is to another country. Yeah, that makes no sense at all, and that people have put up with it as long as they have. But we have issues here in Canada, too, and, uh, and subsequently, you know, the, the kind of issues that are unfolding in South Africa, that is the canary in the proverbial coal mine for all white people everywhere worldwide. Uh, because, uh, you know, already in, uh, in Europe, there are many places already no-go zones where, you know, and, and down in, in downtown Paris where chimp hybrids have basically turned everything ugly and upside down and they're pooping on the sidewalk and the smell of urine, you know, it's starting to smell there just as bad as when you come into a kraal, you know, a traditional um, African Negro place. You know where women have like lip discs the size of dinner plates, and oh my God, bones in their ears, and there's still skulls on poles, and mumbo jumbo and jujitsu, ju and jujitsu, <laughs> jujitsu. Well, there might be some jujitsu, but there certainly is juju uh, there. Oh yeah, they they definitely would. so that's the thing. You see, the the Negroes that are I mean by and large the average Negro in Africa has an IQ that's less than 80. About 75 is the average IQ of an African Negro, and they believe in witchcraft. And so in Zimbabwe, for example, the fact that the land isn't producing anything, that the land has become barren, you know, what were once really highly productive farms, they blame that on a curse that the white people placed on the land so that the Negro couldn't get anything out of it. That's what they actually believe. And so... Uh, yeah, they believe, uh, you know, their sorry circumstances you know, has nothing to do with their retardedness, their their hybridization from simians. But no, they don't, because, they, you know, I mean, a retard doesn't know that he's a retard. You see, that's the thing. And, and that's, again, for anybody to doubt that claim that I'm making is go back to when the World Cup soccer matches were being played in South Africa 
and the uh, the Negroes were they filled that entire stadium, and they all brought vuvuzelas, vuvuzelas, you know these plastic horns, and they couldn't stop blowing them, and it was so no, so loud and so annoying that for me. It totally destroyed the entire World Cup. I, I was able to because I don't mind watching don't mind watching a bit of soccer now and then. It's World Cup. It's a pretty you know it's kind of exciting. Watch you know, a few people toss a ball around. I mean again you know dogs toss balls around and they do that well too. But you know to see human beings do it once in a while it's kind of entertaining. I don't take it all that seriously. But the fact that those vuvuzelas didn't stop blowing. Uh, I could only watch about five minutes, six minutes of it, and that was it for me. Um, then uh, I'm hearing in news reports uh, Negroes saying, well, that's our culture, it's a cultural expression, and so forth. But then I'm thinking, well, you look at that plastic tube, Negroes never invented plastic. They never even invented language. They didn't invent you know, a plank. They didn't invent a staircase. And so, uh, you know, they, they didn't certainly invent plastic horns. Uh, the, the instrument that they did invent was a drum, but that's about it. That's about the extent of Negro um, musical instrument development. So, um, yeah, there's a whole lot of issues with regard to those, uh, you know, Negroes running governments of nations that control you know, like, ooh, dangerous weapons, and and they have communist uh, ideas, or they're Muslims. Yeah. Anyway, read the Koran uh, in uh, the Horror, which is a book I produced. You can buy it through my website, or even grab my handbook for the righteous, or how to beat the unrighteous at their own game, and and learn what really is uh, the difference between common law and admiralty law, and how you can actually represent yourself. Uh, very effectively in court without hiring lawyers, and so to have more insight into you know who you are, what you are, what you are in in law, what is really the true law, and what is uh, you know which is common law or natural law, and, and what really you know uh, is admiralty law, and and who is responsible, and some insight into banking and. Oh, yeah, it's a very useful book. People have effectively used that in our court systems here. In fact, I have as well. And uh, saved myself quite a substantial amount of money and even a potential jail term. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, we are nearing the end of this program already. Look at that. Gosh, how fast things go uh, when you're talking about interesting things. I'm going to put something into your mind. Think about Table Mountain you know, at Cape Town, Table Mountain, and now think of that as the uh, that what's left over, a tree stump, if you will, a, a, a tree that was incredibly high. And same with these buttes and mesas in Arizona and Nevada and Utah and so on. Take a look at those. Those are actual tree stumps of trees that were incredibly high, as tall as, you know, a number of kilometers, six even or more. You can do the measurements for yourself. But that's something to think about, and uh, I'm going to definitely be uh, talking about that on Radio Free Stratophericus on Resolution RDO Network on blogtalkradio.com. Same time, same place next Friday upcoming, and I'll be uh, down the rabbit hole uh, with my friends on uh, Eurofolk Radio on uh, Friday as well, so you can listen for that. Thank you very, very much for uh, tuning in. Uh, those of you who um, appreciate what uh, we're trying to do with Radio Free South Africa, consider supporting us with a donation, um, and you can certainly do that uh, very easily through the website RadioFreeSouthAfrica.com. Also, perhaps if you like uh, Blog Talk Radio and wish and uh, and the Resolution RDO Network, perhaps consider supporting Sonny Thomas because uh, we certainly need uh, some funds for this radio network. So I wish you all the best. Have a great week. And then until next Tuesday, have an awesome time of it. Bye now.